this is not about recruiting for us. This is more about um, just educating you on how to make money. It's just kind of like our way to give back to the realtor community because it's comp competitive and it's hard or it can be hard if you don't know what to do. Um, this system that I'm about to teach you guys is what I like built. It's like the foundation of my business. And it's so easy and it costs almost nothing um, to maintain. You just have to consistently do it. And we'll get into that a little bit. Well, hey, I'm really touched that you guys are all here. I mean, it's a big honor. I know it's a, an hour, hour and a half of your time. Um, so, and I keep looking that way because that's where y'all's faces are. So let me move this so I don't look, doesn't look so weird. Um, the, uh, it's really fun to be here. It's fun to like be able to tell you something that I'm really passionate about, about how to build a big business without breaking the bank, uh, which is really just, as you probably figured out, talking to the people that you already know. Um, we'll talk about uh, how to put that database together. We're going to talk about what you say to them, what you text them, what notes you write to them, how often you do it. It's actually, once you see how simple this system is, you'll start to wonder why so many people struggle. Um, Maybe you won't wonder about that, but I always wonder about that because it's really it's really not that complicated. And, and you have to understand, I got started when I was like 23 years old. Most of my friends and everybody I knew back in the day were my drinking buddies in college. They could not afford houses. So I know like I know this works as long as you stick to it is the point of that little story there. Um, um, so just a little background on me. I got into real estate in 1997. Um, it was, uh, I started in Lakeway back when 620 was a two lane road in and out of Lakeway. Now it's nearly a super highway. Um, and I worked for a lady named Elaine Garner. She was mean as a snake, hardcore. She taught me the value of work ethic though. Funny story is I started working at that office, um, before I started working for her and I knew she was the number one producer in Austin. Back then she sold $10 million a year. And now like, if you don't sell like a half a billion, you don't have a chance of being number one. Like, and that's how crazy this is. But back then it was 10 million. She serious. And she put together the first team in real estate. We even made it on the front of a magazine for that. Um, but I used to, she had somebody at the time. So I used to go help her weed her garden to like get into her good graces. And then she hired me and then she was just mean as hell. And I stuck with her for like five years. Uh, but I learned like work ethic and the, and mostly what I learned was like the power of consistency. And that's a, that's a big piece of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, and it's because it's not complicated. You can, if you consistently do just even the smallest thing every day, like your life will never be the same again. Um, I got my database, like it's my, it's your group of people. And I promise we'll talk about this, but I got it to about 300 people and I left it at about 300 people for a very long time. And it was in, in the hard times I survived with those guys. And in the good times I thrived with them. What's funny is as you get more and more into this business guys, You'll learn that like it doesn't matter what's going on in the economy houses are always buying and selling right you just have to change your mindset and you have to change your strategies but people you know will always be buying and selling when the market goes down it's a great time to buy you know when the market goes up it's a great time to buy it's an even better time to sell you know there's a lot of enthusiasm in the market people like to be a part of that but when things go down you just change your tactics and you can still make a ton of money um for the longest time uh, part of my business or my business, like it was between 65 and 75% repeat referral business. Guys, what's great about that is that like I almost had to spend no money for marketing. And when you spend no money for marketing and you pay your broker, after you pay your broker and like some of your expenses, just to maintain your license and your ABOR dues or wherever it is that you are, HLAR uh, for some of you, uh, you're like, your profit margin is like 50%. And when you're just getting started, like you can build a really nice life with those kind of margins. It's like the highest, one of the highest margin industries, like all across all industries uh, in real estate. And as you're going, if you decide you want more, then you start leveraging off the pieces that you don't want to do. And then you start, you know, if you want to start growing, then you start spending money on leads and systems and other tools like that. And that's when your profit margin starts to go down, but you're trading that for the time that you're freeing up and some things like that. But if you, there are plenty of people out there that make tons of money and they have extraordinary lives just focusing on what you're going to learn today, how to talk to people that you already know. Does that sound good? <laughs> Is this interesting so far? We're only in it for like five minutes. Good. That was great. <laughs> So uh, before we get started, we're going to teach you, uh, I'm going to teach you the what and the how, right? I'm going to teach you the, uh, like what you're going to do and how you're going to do it, how often you're going to do it and how simple it is. 
some of the things that we need to talk about that are probably more important than those because it's really like three or four steps that you just do every day, every day, every day, every day. All right. But there's some other things and that's like our head gets in our way. It happens to everybody. It still happens to me. And that's the why. Why do you want to do this? We're not going to go through an exercise where you're going to learn like, you know, we're going to focus on what's your big why because that's a really complicated thing and uh, it takes a lot of thought and it changes all the time. But we are going to talk about like what you need to know to get you from where you are to where what's next, if that makes sense. And I call this the first one is the human principle. There's three of these, the human principle. And that principle is that everybody that you know, everybody that your friends know, your second best friends, your third best friends, your fourth best friends, I'm stealing vocabulary from my elementary kid, son. Like everybody that's in, in your social circles, everyone, you have at least a hundred of these, I promise you, they all want you to be successful, all right? And, they, and what's great about like, they want you to be successful Humans want humans to be successful. It's like in our nature to support each other, to see each other grow, to see each other achieve things, to root for the underdog, right? That's what we all love to do. What's important about that, guys, is that it's like, it's the power of forgiveness. And I'm not talking about like, forgive your best friend for cheating out of something. I'm talking about like, when you call them and you say, hey, I just got my real estate license and you hang up on them, like they're going to know like, okay, like, this fellow is trying to like trying to generate some business. So this he's like working on his business skills. And they're going to forgive you for like kind of throwing up on him with your words, right? This is kind of a funny thing, but I just want you to understand like it's not you're not going to get it perfect. And in the beginning, it's going to sound ridiculous when it's coming out of your mouth. But as you start to get momentum and you start to get success in how you're doing your real estate and how you're treating people and how you're showing like showing off your or informing your database of your successes. Like your confidence is going to grow, right? And people are going to understand that they're part of that process with you. It's kind of like they're just part of your community, your new community that you're putting together, right? They trust you. They want you to be successful. Just remember that. Mom and dad want you to be successful. Your best friend wants you to be successful. Your neighbor wants you to be sex successful. Just like you want local businesses to be successful in your world. Like you pay attention to who you're giving your money to, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there are people who are doing the same thing, and especially the people that know you. Now, if you know anybody who doesn't want you to be successful, stop talking to them. Like, kick them out of your phone, right? Maybe you'll have one person like that. That sound good? I like it. Tracking? All right. I, like it. I call this the remind them principle. This is the most important part about this. It's your job to consistently remind the people that want you to be successful what it is that you do, okay, so that they'll remember what they want you to be successful in. I know that's a lot of words and it's kind of confusing, but it's your job to remind people what you do, right? It's basically like marketing, but it's marketing without spending tons of money. It's marketing just picking up the phone and calling somebody and saying, hey, Michael, is this is Clay Bernie. How are you? Just a quick reminder, I'm in the real estate business. I just sold another house. Do you know anybody I can serve, right? You're not always going to talk about that. We'll get into that in a minute. But keep in mind, like people only have space in the brain for like one person per industry. And you have to constantly remind them that it's you that does the real estate, right? That's the case. Think about it. Like how many dry cleaners do you know? How many hair, how many blow dry bars do you go to? How many sushi places do you go to? Like, just think about it. You really just have space in your brain for one person per industry. And it's your job to remind them. That's the remind them principle. Really clever name. Just wanted to make sure nobody forgot what it was. Perfect. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> Let me see if I left anything out. There was something else. Yeah. All right. And this is the obvious principle. You have to consistently remind them what it is that you do. These are the three principles behind building a big business. Guys, I use this. My income ranged, okay, from $17,000 net income all the way up to $450,000 net income just doing this. All right. I didn't have an assistant. I didn't have a team. I didn't have marketing expenses except for like some note cards and business cards. I didn't have all these crazy expenses that some like Zillow, good grief, what do you have to spend with those guys these days? Like I didn't have any of this stuff and I was making tons of money. Right. And I got to focus on, we're going to get to this in a second. I got to focus on having deep relationships with people. I got to pick who I wanted to work for. Right. This is one of the best parts of this. There's no, one of the, the best part of this is the marketing costs are nominal. When you start your own business, your bottom line, your profit is one of the most important, it's the most important pieces of this. Because in the beginning, it's hard to like justify buying a ribeye. 
when you get traction, you consistently do the same thing over and over and over, then you get to start making better choices. You get to start having better choices, right? Because you're making a little bit more money and you're being mindful about your expenses. And it's a lot easier to work for people that you already know. One, one of those reasons is because they're going to hold you accountable. It's a whole different accountability level when mom says, I want you to help me buy a house or sell your child at home. Like you want to take very good care of that whole situation, right? And you're going to do that for everybody that's in your database. Even if it means driving to like Thrall, Texas, Adrian, on a Sunday morning. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Uh, like I was saying, deepen your relationships with your people. Because you're going to be talking to them so much, you're going to learn a whole lot more about them. You're going to build a thing called trust with everybody, right? And you're going to have a deeper level of trust. They're going to tell you when they're pregnant. They're going to tell you when they're getting divorced. They're going to tell about the raise. They're going to tell about the car. They're going to tell about people that are dying, people that are living, like all these crazy things that are going on. Like you're going to end up being, you're going to end up being the hub of this massive network, this community of people that only think about you as their realtor. And they only want to refer you as a realtor because you've built up such a massive level of trust and you're performing at such a high level when it comes to serving and making sure their needs are met and then some, right? And when you start doing that, when you start paying attention to other people with such a high level of um, like care, then you actually start treating yourself better, right? You start having more confidence, right? You start, you have like a different vibration in your body. People pick up on that. And when you add open houses to this, people, when they walk in, they, you immediately know, think about when you've met somebody, you like, you immediately know if they're like full of it or they got it going on, right? It's the same thing. Same thing in sales. Like people will instantly know, like if you've got it going on and if you already have a history, like a track record of taking care of your database, the people that you know, and you feel good about it, you feel confident about how that's going, people that you don't know that you meet when you start to go out and do some of these extra things to add to your database, then they're going to be attracted to you instantly. Trust me, there's plenty of realtors out there that don't do this, that are out there and every, all the consumers out there are meeting them. So when they see somebody that's got it going on, that's taking care of the people that they already know, which seems like real estate 101, seems like life 101, you know, they're going to know it. You instantly know that and they're going to be attracted to you. And then they're going to hear you talk about, you know, you know, the market, you know, the neighborhood. And then they're going to be like, holy shit, I got to hire this person. They know what they're doing, right? It's that easy. And I'll show you the numbers are behind it in a minute. Also, when you start like, and yeah, right here, so give yourself a sense of accomplishment, pride and confidence and leadership. Like, I, like, I, I know it sounds weird, but think about a time when you like, there was a guy or a girl or whatever we're allowed to call in these days, like that you really wanted to be around or you wanted to be with. And there was like, you just saw something that you really had to have and you just got your mind around, I'm going to do whatever it takes to be there. Like think about, and then think about the person you became to do that. You started like taking better care of yourself. You started working out. You started just, you were just so thinking about it. You started researching or stalking or whatever it is that people do these days online, right? You started just to know more. And when you start to do that, you get a lot of confidence and then you get, boom, next thing you know, you're attracted to it. It's the same thing here. When you start to build up like just these basic levels of sales skills and building your and building up your database and connecting people and being the connector for people, you're just going to have a different aura and a buzz about you. And you're like, your whole brain is going to switch. I don't know how to explain it other than I've seen it happen before over and over and over. And when you start doing that, then you're going to start discovering like all kinds of opportunities and possibilities. That this is like I'm telling you, this is it's like a gateway to like a whole new universe if you do this consistently. And I think it's actually just like when you were trying to be next to that person or a goal that you had, it's just you were consistently doing the same thing over and over to get whatever it took to get to that goal. I'm sure I'm sure all of you have a moment or a thing or a something or someone that you went after, but think about what you went through to get to that point. Is there anything you did? You did whatever it took to get there. Does that make sense so far? Yep. Hopefully, good. And now that Austin is like the number one city to move in in the galaxy, according to all these reports, you get to meet all kinds of fascinating people. And I bet you the first human alien interaction will happen in Austin, Texas, if it hasn't happened already. <laughs> Everybody's moving here. Um, now, a lot of you, <laughs> I go back and forth on this slide. Uh, we'll just, okay, we'll do it because it's kind of fun. And I've talked a little bit about it. This is more about the why. Some of there's, and so we, we do a lot of training around taking care of your database and taking care of your people on our team. And we could always, we probably could do more. So I'm glad a lot of the agents are on here just to see some of this, why it's so important. 
But I spent like 20 years building a business based on just the relationships that I already had, right? And I remember being an agent, like I was just sick and tired. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was like failing in economics at the University of Texas or is like smoking pot or something too much. And I didn't like, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then I discovered like real estate and like how much money you can make and how you get to interact with people and like how you could like quote unquote be the boss of your time schedule, which is hilarious to think about now. Be, like I was thinking about all these things and I was just like, all right, I'm going like, to go out there and see what I'm doing because my buddies were graduating and they were getting these $40,000 a year jobs to work at like Broadwing and 3M and some of those companies that were around back then. And I was like, 40 grand a year. I mean, like this person just made that in two months, you know, in my office. And I thought, I think I can do that. I don't want to do these 4% cost of living raises every year. Like I don't want to deal with like trying to brown nose and and deal with management and work in a thankless job for a thankless manager. I didn't want to take that risk. I wanted to see like what it was that I could accomplish. Right. And a lot of you would probably have hit that point. I could probably ask you like how many of you are sick and tired of your freaking life and you're ready to do something different. Right. That's what a lot of it is for people. And you get into real estate where it's like an unlimited income potential and you hear all these statistics about like, a third of you aren't going to renew your license next year. 85% are going to fail. 90% of all small businesses in America fail after 10 years. And you think about that and then you're like, well, what does not failing mean? And how many of those are just getting by? And like the odds start to really like start to crush you. I'll tell you the difference. The reason that people succeed is that you figure out like I'm so sick and tired of what it is that I'm doing that I'm going to do whatever it takes to get over there. And I'm going to consistently do what it takes to make these things happen. And the reason I know that you guys are already better than most, that you have a better chance is because you're actually curious enough to take an hour of your life to listen to this guy talk about just talking to the people you already know in your life. It's like common sense, right? But it's seeking improvement, bettering yourself, taking the steps to like invest in yourself. That's why I know you're going to be successful because you're taking the time to do that. And that's what matters, y'all. That's the difference between failing and not failing or being successful and not being successful. Some parts of failure are okay as long as you learn from it. But you think about like what your why is or what it is that's calling you. Sometimes it's enough to just say, I'm freaking sick of the choices I have right now. I want better choices. I don't know what it looks like. I'm going to go figure it out. And you're going to mess around and you're going to go throw up on people with your words and your scripts and things like that. And the people that you're talking to are going to say, you know what? It's okay. I already know you. I know you're trying harder. And I know next time you talk to me, it's going to sound better, look better, and feel better. And the next time you call me three months from now, it's going to be even better than that. And then you're going to have open house success. And then you're going to have success over here. The next thing you know, like you're unstoppable force. And I've seen it happen to people in less than six months. Now, not everybody's looking for this. Some people are just like, hey, I sold a business. I'm ready to get into something new. I'm going to go dominate over here. And this is just one of the systems they're going to implement, which is awesome too. But for the 90% of the people that I talk to, because I do a lot of recruiting and training and things like that, people are just like, I got to figure something else out. This is a perfect place to do it, but you've got to consistently be doing things to improve your life and improve, improve your skills. That's the whole point of that rant. You get what you put in, you want better choices, work-life balance exists later, <laughs> all right? If you want more in this business, you just have to know you're gonna give up your free time. Whatever balance that you're in right now of not being happy, not feeling fulfilled, just kiss it goodbye. Because you got to get out and you got to hustle. On the other side of it, when you consistently are making more money than you know what to do with, and you're consistently attracting new clients to you, and so many, so much so that you can't handle them anymore by yourself, then you can leverage your time and you can go hire somebody. Then you start to get a little balance, but you have to do whatever it takes to get from where you are right now to that point. There's no in between, there's no shortcuts to this, but there are steps to it. And you just have to take those steps. Now, on our team, and this is not a recruiting thing, we know what those steps are. We have a success of doing that for people, with people, actually, not for, with, right? So we know what it looks like. So we know, like, if you do these things that we ask you to do, and then some, that will di dictate how quickly you're going to get there, right? I already know how much money you're going to make. I already know how many clients you're going to help. I already know what you're, like, these things are going to look like for you. So I know this is possible. Consistency. Consistency is that's like the foundation of that's one of our values, y'all. So if you don't, if you pick up any message in this, just it's consistency. Sound good?
Sounds good. You guys are amazing. You're still with me. I'm so lucky. All right. So let's talk about a database. When you get started in real estate, you need to figure out, however possible, to, you need to get a list of 100 people. You need to get their names. You need to get their phone numbers. You need to get their email addresses. Everybody freaks out when I say 100 people. You don't need to freak out. I promise you, you know 100 people. Okay? You're going to put them on a list. It's everybody, like mom, dad, friends, best friends, everybody. Anybody that you see in your circle of life and your journey, anybody you come across, it's okay to ask them their name. They want to tell you their name anyways. They like talking about themselves, right? You're going to tell them you got into real estate. Can I have your phone number? Because in case something comes up, I want to be able to talk, call you and tell you about it. And I know the human principle, you want me to be successful. I promise not to wear you out. And you're like, well, okay, here's my phone number, all right? Same as social media. You got 2,000 friends, you can find 100 phone numbers out of your 2,000 friends, all right? You got to put a little work into this. But we're not talking like months of work. This is like maybe a half a day of work. If you sit down and intentionally say, I need to go figure out who my 100 are, you put your list together. Most of you will go right past 100, straight to 200 and 300, Okay. Adrian, how many did you come? How many did you find? Adrian's 18 years old, y'all. He's hustling and he's busting his rear end. He's on, he just joined our team. I love this guy. He's got the heart of a lion. Yeah. So the first day, um, I got to the office. I had 70, 70 in total on the first day. But 18 then, years old. <laughs> the, the next day, because I started calling all these people and they started giving me their phone, like other friends' phone numbers. I was able to get to 130 after that on my second. Yes. Day. I was definitely happy about that. <laughs> yeah. So it's doable. Thank you for sharing, Adrian. So that, <clears throat> that makes me proud, buddy. All right. So with this system, we're going to use some like national averages on what a consistently worked farmed is what it's another word for a database looks like based on the National Association Realtors. And this is average. You guys are above average because you're here, right? So the average is you're going to get 10% of your database is going to give you a referral. So in your first year, your 100 people is going to, they're going to give you 10 referrals. So you're going to have 110 people in your database. I'm, I'm not going to go through all these numbers. I'm just going to talk about the first year. All right. And according to the National Association of Realtors, when you have a community like your database, people that you already know, you have a deep relationship with them, you're going to get a 10% kind of like turnover rate. All right. So what that means is 10% of your database is going to buy or sell a house. Sometimes you're going to lease. You're going to help them too because you're going to do whatever it takes to make a little bit of money. I understand. That's 11. The average commission in Central Texas is like 13500 bucks, something like that. It's a lot of money. That times 11 is 148500 bucks. You're one. And all you have to do, ladies and gentlemen, is talk to everybody once a month. And everybody, which is 100, 110 the first year, is about five people a day, five days a week, right? Times four, four weeks in a month, five people a day. That takes an hour. You guys get that? In one hour, you can make 150 grand if you're willing to do the work. Now, there's other things you got to do. This is always the part that people get hung up on. Okay. So then the next year, so you follow the same 10, 10, 10, 10%, 10%. And there'll probably be some, you know, the value of the houses is going to go up like 100,000% every year, it seems like these days. Let's just say it doesn't change at all. The next year is 163 grand. The next year is 180 grand. The next year is 200, 215. And keep in mind, guys, you still have zero marketing expenses. So you're paying your broker, you're paying your fees, you're paying your taxes, and you're taking home the rest. How many of you would like to make, so let's just say you have $50,000 of all that stuff, you get $100,000 left your first year. How many of y'all here know what to do with $100,000 your first year in the business? Has anybody here like made and spent that money in one year? Probably a couple of you, but I know not everybody. That's what's so great about real estate. That's what also makes it super competitive. That's why you've got to consistently do the work every day. That makes sense? Oh, yeah. Is this any of this like kind of setting? This is the thing about Zoom. I can't tell the energy. I know when we're doing this in person, like I can see faces and feel body movement, stuff like that. But is this like tracking a little bit? Does this seem almost it's so easy? It's unbelievable. Does it seem like it's almost so easy? You can't wait to get started? That should be the answer. Now. Absolutely. Yeah. 
So this is what your database should look like. Name, phone number, email, and address. You don't even have to have your address anymore, but it's nice to have it. I'll tell you why in a minute. You don't need to pay for a fancy CRM. You can put it on a spreadsheet and you can just check off the list, check them off, check them off, check them off, talk to them, talk to them. You can have 12 columns for every month. If you do that consistently, guys, I promise you, maybe add a social post in there every once in a while. I guess twice a week is what they're saying. I think we do like two times a day, but anyways, I mean, you can like, your, your life will never be the same again and you'll feel so freaking good. And you'll get to take amazing vacations and buy those shoes and those purses and those cars and make investments and do all kinds of fun stuff. All right. So this is a little, this is a little bit of word. <laughs> you can read it. This is a little word about consistency and the compound effect. There's a, there's a, um, an analogy uh, that a lot of people use. Tony Robbins is somebody we, I, I like to follow. My team likes to follow. Um, and, he, and he gives this example. Like it's the power of doing consistent work. It's not a linear trajectory. This is not, it's just not how it works. So when you double, and we're gonna use just doubling something to show you what it does at the end of like 13, 15, 18, 20, 25 years, okay? You take 10 cents, you double it, so it's two years. That's just, you're consistently doing the same thing. You're just doubling something every year, all right? Or you're just making five phone calls a day, or you're making 10 phone calls a day, or you're sending five phone calls and two notes and one video. Like you come up with your system and you just do that every single day. This is what happens. Your database will grow because you're going to get referrals and you're going to do deals. And you're going to get repeat business on top of that. That'll kick in. And then they're going to be getting referrals and you're going to get more referrals and you're going to repeat business. And your, and your database is going to be working and spending like crazy and you're consistently working it. And the next thing you know, in 13, 14, 15 years, 22 years, 10 cents is doubled by 25 years. That's when you've had a really good career. I've been doing this for 25 years. Uh, my, my graph looks a little different than that. Um, you get like you get the compound effect, and the compound effect shows you like your your database and your pay and everything that you do will skyrocket. But you it takes time to build it up. Now it doesn't take time. It's not. Uh, I should have done a shorter time frame because it's not. You're not broke the whole time like this thing shows you. It's not a flat line. It increases linearly and then it shoots up. Okay. I just want you to think about this. The hockey stick growth, this thing you always hear about like PayPal and Yahoo and Google and all these guys that went through hockey stick growth. It happens in small business all the time for the people that consistently do the work, right? And they adapt along the way. All right. So here's a way to speed that up. And this is, we're going to add open houses to this database, okay? Now here's the same system where you're getting 10% referrals, 10% transactions, but now you're going out and twice a week for 40 of the weeks out of the year, you're doing an open house. And the goal of every open house is to find one person that wants to give you the real name, the real phone number, the real email address, and they have some kind of motivation to buy or sell real estate in the next year or two. Somebody that you can have a conversation with. If you focus on that when you do an open house that you just need one person, you'll get that one person, I promise you. Especially now, there's like hundreds of people looking around, all right? So instead of doing it for 52 weeks, you just do it for 40 weeks. Well, you add it. So that means you add 80 people because you do two a week times 40 weeks, 80 people. You add 80 people to your database on top of the efforts that you're already doing. Now look at what your income does, right? It goes from $158,000 to $256,000. So it goes to $390,000 to so $537,000, $750,000. Guys, I know people that do this at a high level that make well over a million bucks. And then some of them have a database of less than 400 people. Now I'm in a position to be able to network and mastermind with a lot of these people so I can ask them like, what are you doing? And they're just being hyper intense and hyper focusing on bringing massive value to the people that they already know. And their marketing expenses are nothing. My marketing expenses right now are almost 20% of our budget, right? I would dearly love to get rid of that. But that's not where we are right now. It's not what we're committed to. But that comes just right out of your profit. And remember, you're starting a business. You're now in your self ink, right? You're your own business. So you have to be thinking about what your profit is, what your ROI is. Repeat referral business based on your database is free. Okay? That makes sense? Does it get you a little excited, some of you? Kind of? Okay. I finally am going to give you the keys to the castle. This will blow your mind. The very first thing you're going to do after you put your database together, all right? That's the first thing. The very first, second first thing you're gonna do is, it's 
mind blowing, right? <laughs> oh, there's a smiley face. Um, all right, here's what you're gonna say. Now I'm gonna give you this script, and then I'm gonna break it down to you for you because I'm gonna I need to explain. I feel like I need to explain why each piece of this is important. Go ahead and take a picture of it. Write it down. This is especially good for those of you that are getting into it or you've been neglecting your database. Um, man, I am burning up. I'm gonna take my sweater off. Hang on a second. You guys are making me hot. There. Um, so yeah. So you've been in, wherever you are in your career. If you're not paying attention to your database, hopefully you are. This will just fortify some of the things you already know about this and think about it. Um, but I promise you, the people that know you and want you to be successful, they're going to love how interested you're going to be in them. All right. So let's go through this. Hey, how you doing? We all know how to say that. What's going on? Right. And this is just like the first and second time that you get a hold of people. And maybe like once or twice a year, you'll have this exact specific script. I'll tell you what you're going to say in between the other times. As you know, I recently got my real estate license and I committed to providing the highest quality experience for my new clients. Do you have any advice? Listen. All right. Thank you. That's amazing. That's very helpful. That's the most terrific thing I've ever heard. I should buy everybody a poodle. You're right. By the way, when I call, it won't always be about business. I just wanted you to know that. Cool? Oh, and since we're talking, do you happen to know anyone I can help buy, sell, or invest in real estate? Thank you for thinking about that. We'll talk to you soon. Now in there, you're, it's conversational. And in the first couple times you say this, you're not going to sound conversational because you're just trying to get through the script as fast as humanly possible, right, to get comfortable with it. But because of the human principle, people want you to be successful, they're going to forgive you, right? And you're going to start with mom anyways, or dad, or uncle, or whoever, grandparents. You're going to practice it. And the more you say it, the more it's going to flow, okay? The reason you're going to say all these sentences here, instead of saying, hey, just got my real estate license, you know, click, right? Which is what everyone would say, you just want to like get it out of your system. I'm going to break this down for you, right? So you're getting into conversation. You're making, you're like, you're anchoring in with them. And then you're proclaiming, you're making like a pro proclamation of your awesomeness, right? I just got my real estate license and I'm committed to providing the highest quality experience for my clients, for my new clients, right? You want to bring massive value to somebody's life. Everybody loves having massive value added to their life, right? Then you ask them some, for some advice. You make them feel significant. Who likes to feel significant? I like it. Right? I like to be heard. All right? And then you get to practice active listening. And there's some tricks to active listening where you repeat one of their answers, right? Everybody loves that. It means they're actually felt heard. I don't know about you, but I have kids at home. I never heard. So when people do that to me, I feel really significant. I feel really special. And you're going to be able to do this with people in like two minutes on the phone. Okay? And you give them a compliment. Thank you. That's very helpful. And you're going to set an expectation and you're going to ask for business. That's when you get down to business. And when you set the expectation, you've taken the question of the future out of their mind. So now it means you're in control and you know what you're doing, right? You're letting them know you're confident in your abilities. These are all subtle tricks, guys. And these, I'm not making this stuff up. This is all like all proven, modeled. I'm just sharing it with you. This is like 30 years of my life that I'm just trying to help you out so you can do what I did in 25 years or whatever. You can do it in like three or four, right? And then, you get, and then you're giving them some gratitude. I'm like, when does, not, when does anybody like not like gratitude? And you're really, according to Tony Robbins, we like Tony Robbins, you're hitting all six of their human needs in this one, one little paragraph. And you're going to get started like that. And when you go out and you start talking to them, your clients, them, your people, your community, like you're connecting, right? Your connections. You're going to get started like this. They're going to know like you mean business and they're going to be like, damn, that person's got it together. Where did that come from? Right? And you're going to start doing that. And then, and then you're going to go out and you're going to learn about something and you're going to go have some success and you're going to say, hey, I just helped this person buy this house in Pflugerville. They only paid $60,000 over asking price, not 65. That's a big win for us. Right? And they're like, oh man, this person really knows what they're doing. I'm glad you called and told me about that. Somebody just the other day down the hall was talking about moving to Pflugerville. Let me connect you. It happens all the time to us. I know it'll happen for you. Okay? Any questions on that? Looks like we do have some questions. Can I come back to him? 
I don't know where my people went. I'll just assume that's a yes. Um, one of the things, I mean, I have some great stories around. We used to send, and we still do to an extent, um, handwritten notes, just like, thanks for taking, you know, thanks for taking my call. I know you're really busy. I just want to let you know, like, I think you're amazing. And I'm going to call you again. And, and in the beginning, they didn't even have my logo on them, right? They were just handwritten notes, and I would send them to them. Guys, I started going on, like, people that sell them a house, and, like, send them thank you know, like, all the time, like, constantly sending thank you notes. Well, I'd go to these, I'd go to these houses, and, like, go see people, and they would have all these thank you notes magnet, like, on their refrigerator that I had sent them, right? People don't, like, what do you get in the mailbox these days? You get, like, bills, and, like, I want to buy your stuff, and a bunch of junk. You don't get anything, like, personalized anymore. You're hoping for a check and it happens like lately, like once a month for some people, but like, you, like nobody gets anything. And so they like treasure those things. They're little treasures. I don't like, I've kept every thank you note, Christmas card, birthday card, everything my family has for the last eight years. We have it in our treasure box. So we call it. People keep this stuff and that's like a big item of value. And that costs 52 cents to send and whatever it costs to buy these notes, right? Low marketing costs, high impact, massive value. We sent a uh, thank you. We sent a note, handwritten notes to 50 people in East Austin. We sold a piece of property over there. This guy called me and said, Clay, architect in town. Clay, I get a lot of people telling me about they want to buy my property and all this. And this was like half a city block that had seven old houses on it. He's like, I never called him back, but it looks like you wrote this because I can't read it. <laughs> so, so I was like, You're right, uh, Richard, I did write it. And he goes, Well, I think we're ready to sell it. And we'll sell it to you for a million and a half bucks. And you got two days to get back to me. I'm not calling anybody else because you took the time to write me a handwritten note. No shit, guys. Found a group. We bought it. We closed on it. And it was the, and it was the handwritten note. And then I turned, and then we sold all the houses after redoing I mean, it was like $250,000 of, of, of income just from a handwritten note. Plus, every time I walk into a listing and they got my notes sitting out for me to see you on the refrigerator and i don't really have to go through the presentation like they already trust me you just give them the paperwork right tell them what the next steps are this is super simple do you guys agree this is super simple stuff yes you should and if you've already got a database and you start calling them and you start giving handwritten notes or you send them a text like the whole, the, like the, the whole world is going to open up to you for you so fast and you're going to do it without having to spend all these money on internet leads and give up like 30 or 40% of your cost as, as a cost of sale to pay these aggregators. Or like, you don't have to spend it on dialers. You don't have to spend it on Google leads. You don't have to spend it on realtor.com leads. You just focus on your people. And if you're a realtor that sold a, a gazillion houses already, if you stop doing all that other stuff and you just focused on your people, you'd make a ton of money and you'd get to keep it. Keeping your money, guys, since you're going into yourself, Inc., in real estate is very important, right? Wouldn't you agree? And you're going to get all kinds. You're going to get sellers. You're going to get buyers. You're going to get lease leads or whatever. And when you get a, a seller right now, you put a sign in the yard and you blast on internet, you're going to pick up like two buyers from that because they're going to call you directly and want to deal with you directly. This is like the gift that gets, keeps on giving. It's the most magical, beautiful strategy that you can have in this business. All you got to do is ask people how they're doing and remind them that you're in real estate. That's it. There is, we started recently doing video. That might look creepily familiar. I promise you I didn't take that just a second ago. All right. But just listen to this. I've been doing this 25 years. Hey, good morning, Josh and Bree. Congratulations. Everything is officially under contract and signed off on. Uh, really happy for you guys. We, I think if this sticks, we exceeded expectations and how crazy this market is uh, and what you'll get for it. So we'll work hard to make sure that happens. Stephanie will be in touch today to um, kind of get you, you know, to outline the navigation of uh, the next few weeks. Uh, as always, call me with questions, text me with questions, no problem. Um, but it's been an honor working for you. I'm glad it's working out so far. And you're amazing. Have a great day. Okay, did you hear me stumble right there? I've been doing this for 25 years and I still stumble. But you know what the response was? I love this video. Thank you for updating us. This is a great idea. So now we're doing videos. And you know what's great about videos is you don't have to sit there and freaking text on that tiny phone in your pocket, right? You can just spit it out. And now, like, we're more connected than ever. I just realized it's like the same shirt. So maybe I did do that today. The, um, right?
those are like, hey guys, I'm just, I'm just so you know, this is like the end of the presentation. Like, this is the end of it. You just have to do three or four things. You really just have to do one thing a month per person that's in your database. You put your database together. I think that's the end. Yeah, we're not watching you again, right? You put your database together. You have meaningful, purposeful conversations with them once a month. And you can say, by the way, when you tell them, like, we're not going to talk about business every single time, you still call them every month because you got to remember, it's up to you to remind them what you do. People forget. But if you stay top of mind, they're going to be listening for people having sales conversations. Then when you get it in the in-between months, after you've talked to them one time, two times, things like that, you can, you can, um, I just open up your chats. You guys are amazing. You know that the, um, um, you know, you can just have basic conversations, just checking in, just let me know. Hey, just by, just so you know, I think this is exciting. I just sold this house or I just listed this house. Do you know anybody who wants to live in this neighborhood? Right. It's just constantly adding value, constantly talking about real estate. They're going to see you. They may screen you, but they're going to know exactly why you're calling. And you just moved up to a priority in their list, in their head. Because it's like, oh, yeah, Clay Bernie likes real estate. Thank you for calling me again. And then they don't answer you to send a little text. Hey, I was just thinking about it. Checking in. We just sold this house. Or just whatever. And you send them a little video of it. That's all you got to do. The way these phones are now, like your whole marketing system, when you get take control of your database and you own it like you're supposed to own it, like everything that you do, it's, I mean other than the cost of the phone, like it's, it's free. And that's like the best part of this. You get to keep your money, y'all. And you get to grow exponentially. So that's how you secure buyer and seller leads without breaking the bank. You like to see what I did there? <laughs> Does that have any questions for me? I mean, like, I could, I could go so off the deep end on a bunch of these things, but I was like, no, I'll just keep it official, efficient because it's 35 degrees out and we don't know if it's icing or snowing and we should be freaking out or not. Are there any questions? Hi, yes, I do have a question. Um, so you're saying after we chat with them on the phone and see how they're doing, and that's when we send them the, the text or the thank you card for, like, talking to us, basically? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you're just, re you're, you're one, you're sending them a piece of mail or a text is fine. Just say, hey, thanks for taking the time to talk to me. It's a very professional thing to say to somebody. You're thanking them for their time. You're showing gratitude. And it's like, how hard is that to like thumb that out and send it off? Am I the only one that uses thumbs? I think everybody uses thumbs. Yeah, but li literally. And so what we, for the longest time, I did this for years. I, uh, Guys, like when I started, we didn't even have email. Like we barely even used computers for stuff. You had to, the MLS was like in a book. Oh man, this is like nightmares thinking about that. The, and then it was like, you had to download a list and sort it, do all this stuff. But back then, like I had just a legal pad and I had everybody's name written down and their phone number. We didn't have email address. We couldn't text. So I had to call everybody all the time. Can y'all believe that? Texting didn't exist 25 years ago. Eight years, like 10 years ago. Anyways, and I would just check it off the list. Every year I just do it again. It was so simple and it's still simple now. You don't let, don't let technology like get in the way of like what it's like to have a, a relationship and a connection with the people that you already know. Keep it simple. Totally keep it simple. And I'm telling you, the average is 10% of your database when you work it is a deal. 10% of your database is going to give you a referral. 20% of the people that you know are going to be engaged in everything that you do. Right. What's great about social is it kind of reminds people what you're doing. Do not rely on it. It is not a pillar of industry. All right. It's just a tool. Social is. You've got to talk to people. That's what's going to set you apart. Everyone's afraid to talk to people. You're going to talk to people. <clears throat> that makes sense? Yeah, it makes sense. It works, guys. I know this works. And it's beautiful because it's cost nothing. So whether you're new to town or whatever, since everybody's moving to Austin, you guys just even call your friends back in Ohio or Reno, Nick, wherever you're from, you're going to have your list together. Everyone knows somebody who's moving to real estate, or you might accidentally attract to somebody to move to Austin to help you out. I mean, there's like so many positive things come out of just talking to the people that you already know. You already have a relationship with them. 
and they want you to be successful and they're cheering for you. And the more you remind them what you're doing, the more they're cheering for you. And what does the universe do when you got a whole bunch of people cheering for you or praying for you? Generally, it takes good care of you, right? That's been my experience so far. So like you owe it to yourself and you owe it to them to be amazing because that's what you're supposed to do. And you can be amazing by just like calling them once a month consistently. They don't know that they're on a plan, right? They're just going to think, oh, wow, they're thinking of me again. Or like, oh, my God, this guy's calling me again. I know. Screen. I'll answer it next time. It's okay. Very few people are going to get upset with you about calling them. I promise you. And the ones that get upset with you, bye. You don't need them in your life anyways. Right? Come on, give me some questions, guys. I got one. Um, so in your experience, do you think it's beneficial to like have a priority list on who to call first in the beginning of the month towards the end? Is there any type of um, order that you use or just kind of keep the same list every month? Yeah, well, that's a great question. As your database begins to grow, especially like in the beginning, you just call everybody all the time. But what's going to happen is the things are going to start to filter to the top. Right, your connectors, your influencers, your biggest supporters, your raving fans, the guys that give you more referrals. I had there was a point in my life in my business. I think like I could track fifty two percent of my business to like three people. Well, I called them a whole lot more than once a month. Right, those are your A pluses. But you got to give everybody a chance to see to tell you who they are, especially in the beginning. Just call everybody. You need to practice anyways, and then you're gonna get going. Right. And then people are going to, and then like business is going to start taking care of itself because you're consistently doing this stuff and your A pluses, you're going to call like every week. Your A pluses aren't going to be 90 people. It's going to be like seven or eight. Right. And it's not, doesn't mean mom is an A plus. It's who gives you the business, who gives you the best advice, who connects you to other people. That's A plus. And then A's are like once a month and then you'll get a big list of A's and then your B's are going to be like once every two months. Your C's are going to be borderline. You'll like, there'll be like a, a pecking order will start to develop as you go along and you'll figure it out as you go along. And for a while there, I was top rating. I just wanted to keep it at 300 because it was all I could handle. So if I had like, if I just wouldn't have a conversation and everybody's going back, I'd drop them out or place them with somebody else. Right. I did a, I did a ton of open houses in the beginning because I had to build up my database as quickly as possible. Guys, I did open houses when you had to print it in the newspaper ad and in the newspaper ad, we have GPS, you know, computers, right? So I had to have a description of the house and the price and freaking directions to get there. But I did it in Lakeway. I don't know if you've been to Lakeway, but it's like they put a big pile of wet noodles on a piece of paper, right? There's no straight streets over there. So you had to like drive around and there's all these crazy, so like the directions were like three lines. So literally, and then you can't have for sale signs in front of the house and you can't do open house signs except for like two hours a week. So it's like the most impossible thing ever. So I'm out there like just going crazy trying to do all this stuff. But people notice, like, when you're hard working, like, people are like, hey, I saw you do this. You feel like unlocked the open house code in Lakeway. Can you come talk to us about listing our house? Right? So when you're doing open houses, just so you know, it's not just buyers you're looking for. You're being interviewed by sellers, too. Yeah. I don't know what started that conversation, but it, uh, that's pretty normal on my team. <laughs> I like it. Oh, we have a couple of questions in the chat box. Um, what books do you recommend? The last one is still the millionaire real estate agent. That's like a blueprint for success in real estate. Um, and then after that, like, God, there's so many good books out there. And a lot of them kind of all have the same points. Um, we like Brene Brown. I like everything done by Tony Robbins. I mean, you just kind of find your guys and you go with them. And that's the same. It's the same line. Just whatever you get into, just consistently keep doing it. Audible books are fine. We drive a lot these days. Reading is, you know, it's, I mean, the thing is when I start reading, I'm like asleep in 10 minutes. So I, I have to do audible books, right? Podcasts, things like that. Do something. You have to do something to enrich your mind. Most people, we all been kind of just, I don't want to say it, but it is like, you got to like, you, you have to, you have to, you have to be like, you have to, you have to commit to being a better version of yourself. So you have to like start putting different things in your brain if you're not doing that already. Because remember, this is very competitive. And the people that are at the top of the game in real estate, 
like they know what they're doing. It's not, they're not there by accident. You don't get to the top of the mountain by falling there, right? So in order for you to make money consistently and to build this like empire, this yourself ink that you're building, you have to consistently do the things to like nurture your brain and nurture your body and like, and to move forward in every aspect of your life. Um, Clay, you mentioned that you're only utilizing 20% of your marketing budget at the moment. Um, I'm just curious, which paid channels are you using now that are delivering uh, meaningful results to your business? Like, yeah. So I, um, thank you. Great question. The, um, I'm actually, my marketing, marketing is 20% of my budget. It's supposed to be like 14. Don't get me started. I'm already yelling at myself inside. All right. <clears throat> um, what are we doing right now? So there's, um, well, you can, if you Google us, you'll see we're one of the highest rated five-star review people out there, um, team out there, if not the highest. Um, so we leverage that a bunch. Um, radio ads, TV ads, we got um, IDX stuff, we got PPC ads. I mean, we're, we're kind of doing a lot, actually. And we're focusing on our people. We don't, I'm not a, I see the question about gifts, uh, closing gifts and things like that. I don't really think that breeds value to a relationship. In fact, I, in my mind, it makes it kind of backwards. Um, so I'll, but I'll give them a note. It depends. I mean, it depends on the client. Sometimes like a Hermes scarf will appear out of nowhere for somebody, but uh, I don't, I don't have like a basket. Like here's the thing for you. Some people are really good at that. I'm just, we're, we don't, I'm not, and we don't, I think. Uh, Julia on my team, she's really good at giving gifts, so maybe she could chime in on that. Yeah, so you just talked to, um, the, I mean, you spend time with your clients, you're showing them houses, and you just kind of pick up on what they like, and if you have no idea, get them a ring, like one of those camera, uh, like doorbells. Oh, uh, yeah. That's my go-to, if I have That's absolutely idea. no idea. Julia Hummel, everybody. She's been with us for like six or seven months and she's already closing a monster amount of deals. And she's just a peach to be around. <laughs> but I actually mean that. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Closing gifts are, they should be tailored to what the client wants, not what you want it to be. That's the, that's the gist of it. <clears throat> yeah, Ashley, good question on open houses. Uh, Cody, are you on? busy um Cody's, he's doing open houses all day every day weekends are generally better uh when i started sundays was open house day i think i keep hearing that saturdays are having better turnout right now uh, but if you're like if you're new to the area or you don't have a database then i would set up shop in an open house and call your people and let people come in i mean do double do double duty on that i think saturdays are the best anybody know differently than that that works better for me. Yeah. <clears throat> New agents have only lived in the area for less than a year. Yeah, and, and Amanda, you pop, but you still pop. Well, where are you from, Amanda? Loser. Sorry, uh, California. Yeah, California. Welcome to Austin. There. Um, uh, yeah. Do your agents? A lot of agents do their open houses. You bet. Yeah, we, I love open houses. I mean, I'm telling you, that's the best place to be. You're, and when you do an open house, like you're in the marketplace. But things where we get really bad for me, like, let me tell you, can I tell you the story about the open house, Stephanie? Is that okay? Do we have time? Please. One time, I did an open house in Lakeway like 20 years ago or something like that. I was like super hungover. I don't ever recommend this, all right? And I'm doing this and I hated life. And I was just like, I wanted to sleep in the master closet and close the door and like do all that stuff, right? This guy walks in and his wife and they're like, yeah, we're thinking about this. This happened a couple of times. I don't do this anymore, by the way. The uh, guy walks in and he's like, hey, you know, we live in Westlake. And this is before like things, prices were crazy. This is a long time ago. All right. They laughed, but I got their contact information. I followed up with them every month for seven freaking years. Okay. They didn't, they still have not sold their house, but their neighbor across the street sold their house. And I listed it and sold it. Double dipped it. I met two people there. One put in a bid on it to buy it. They didn't get it. So I went to their house, helped them list it. 
found him another house to buy on that same street or right on the corner, actually. <clears throat> Sold that house. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right? When I did their open house, I met somebody. They wanted to sell their house up in the uh, Spiceway, Balcones area. Sold that house on Tallyrand. They bought a house over in, in Rosedale, right? And all that happened in like three years because I kept up with these people for seven years. And I, that was like another hundred grand in commission without spending a bunch of money on it. But I have like countless stories. Like there was a for sale by owner. If you get really bored, you want to call for sale by owners, they're a peach too. I called one of them. I ended up selling 26 or 33. I think it was 33 total houses for him and his family in like a five-year span, all in Central Texas, Central Austin. And still counting. And it's still, yeah, it's still, he's still doing stuff. But he wanted to, he was like, I'm tired of Austin politics. They sold other stuff that they've owned, they've owned it since the 50s, right? So that's Terrytown, it's Clarksville. It's all these high dollar areas. One for sale by owner. That was fun. But you can, you just have to consistently like think when you see something, you have to act on it, right? And then follow up. Then we could do a whole other thing about follow up. And that's where the money's made. And that's why you're always calling your people. Just consistently do that. And guys, all that stuff is free. You're asking me questions about internet leads. We're having the wrong conversation. All this stuff costs almost nothing. And all these new homes are being sold just from doing open houses with those people? A lot. A lot of these new. Ask me that again. Like, so you said you did, um, you met one guy, he never did a deal with you for seven years, but you sold 26 yeah. homes. Yeah, he, re he referred me to other people. And then I would do open houses there and I would connect with them. But it was because I stayed in a, like a relationship with him. I stayed top of mind. I was his real estate broker, right? When you talk to somebody every month for seven years, you kind of get to know each other. Right. Right? So we knew each other really well. They're still, they're still thinking about moving to Port A, but, you know, they're older and they're not... You know, they're worried about COVID and things like that. So they're staying put. But the shuffle binds across the street wanted to sell. And the freezing hunts, I met them. And then Tyler and Rosedale, and they just like snowballed one after another. And that's what will happen. As long as you're consistently doing stuff, you'll hit these gold veins. And boom, you're off and running. The next thing you look up, you've got two assistants, a buyer agent club, and listing assistants. And you're making all kinds of things happen. Uh, so Clay, as a newer agent, I will say I've already sold a house with someone I met at an open house. So, and I'm working with another one right now. So, <clears throat> guys, newer is less than a year. That's awesome, dude. I was really happy about that. Just so that I'm clear, um, so your agents allow the new agents to do their open houses for them just because they're like busy or they want to be nice or. Yeah, let me, I need to clarify that question a little bit. So like, I'm, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm just like, we have a team of like 13 people or some 14 people or something like that. And half of them are agents, half of them are ops. The buyer, like the buyer team listing, like they all, they're like a, a big organism they all just help each other out and they work on like they're just there to support each other and train each other and do stuff like that so like if i get a listing i'm a listing guy i say hey buyer club that's what i call them i don't know if they like it or not but i say buyer club here's an open house who wants to do it uh adrian if you're still on here he did his first he's been here with us for two weeks he did his first open house last week so like the the newness of like the your like how recent you are licensed or the area, I don't care about that. It's your effort and your attitude that I care about, right? Because that's what's going to get you far. I don't think I'm answering your question. The answer is yes. <laughs> Absolutely. But you mean you're open house when you're in the marketplace. You're like you're in the middle of it. You're like at the shopping mall. That's where all the buyers and sellers are hanging out or the flea market or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, you can do business mixes with your vendors. Um, I'm not a big networker, so I don't know how to do that. Um, but I don't know. I mean, that's time you could spend doing other things, connecting with your already clients and things like that. <clears throat> Some people are really good at doing that at a high level. I'm not your guy for advice on that. In fact, it makes my skin crawl thinking about it. Ugh. <clears throat> Melissa, I don't, uh, I don't know the answer to that. 
Uh, the value of gifts you can give your clients. Yeah, I think I think there's something to that. Anything else, guys? You guys have been amazing. You've asked some great questions. Do you have any more? You're welcome. I'm just curious from Julia. What part of Austin have you been hosting your open houses in? Everywhere. I've been, I think my first one was in Leander. My very first open house, uh, I followed up with that guy probably once a month, maybe twice a month. And then one random day he called me to go show him a house. And here we are. Um, working with him, but I've been, I've been Kyle, Buda, like I've been everywhere. So it's, we just get it. We see what the listings are that week and um, we go. That's awesome. Yeah, he ignored me for a while. And then one, one random day he was like, Hey, you want to show us a house? Yeah. That's, you got to keep following up with people. That's right. Yeah. And did you do any door knocking or marketing oh. for your open houses? Never done door knocking, no. But we do we circle calls, so we you know we'll call around the neighborhood to let them know. That. Yeah, and you get and there's help with that too. I say help out with that. I mean it's a it's a big group effort to be successful, and that's the whole thing about like if you want to hear like being on a team is like everybody helps like keep moving forward because there's a lot to do. You got to be a lot of places at the same time, right? So how do you find the, the phone numbers to call the, uh, the the neighbors around it? I mean, I've done door knocking, so I'm not opposed to that. But I would love to do, too, like door knocking. And then the next round will be like a phone call. Like, hey, do you want to come to my open house or something? So how do you get the phone numbers? There's software for that. You just draw a little area around the numbers that you want. It'll send them to you. Okay. You use like Mojo is one we use. But I think there's like, I don't know, there's a bunch of them now. Vulcan 7 and so I don't know there's a bunch of them I recommend scrubbing against the do not call list though <coughs> you absolutely need to do that guys call your people put your list together and call your people they want to hear from you they want to know what you're up to they want to support you they want to see you be successful that's what being a human is all about They want to be part of something big, and you can do that. All you got to do is consistently call your people. And your life will be totally different than what it is right now. Not that it's bad. I'm just saying it'll be totally different. You'll have better choices. You get to do more fun stuff. You get to connect with people at a very high level. You get compensated for it. Sometimes there's shitty days, but that's normal, right? You just keep going, man. And on the other side of it is like, it's a whole new world. You get a bigger smile. You feel better about yourself, right? You're serving people, making contributions to their life, guiding them through a very difficult process right now. And you get to experience success with them at the same time. There's not much more connection you can get with somebody. When you have that kind of connection with somebody, of course, they're going to refer you to their friends and their family and their parents that want to move to be closer to the grandkids. Guys, people call us all the time. They're like, hey, all three like buying members, like my parents, his parents, and us, want to all move here and buy a house. Let's talk. You learn how to make those connections and you can practice on your family. You're going to be unstoppable. And that's what you got to be to be successful in this. You have to desire. You have to want to be successful. You got to do what it takes. And it's not complicated. If I told you you only had to spend one hour a day calling five people and your life would be totally different, you triple your income, quadruple your income, whatever, you're having an impact in your community on your spare time at a high level, like who wouldn't want to do that? That's what you get to do. And then people are going to be starting to be like, hey man, I want to work with you because they're, hey, young lady or lady, you look amazing and you're, it looks like you're doing all kinds of great stuff. I want to be part of your world. What can I do for you? People will start walking in your door and start saying, where do I start? What can I do? And you get to start leveraging that out. And you get to get bigger. If that's what you want. And all those leads, everybody out there is looking for leadership right now. You've got to tell them that that's what you do. Consistently. 
I think I've said that word consistently every 10 seconds, just so you know. <laughs> uh, Y'all are awesome. Do you have any other questions? Anybody? Hey, if you guys want to, we are always adding to our team. We're always looking to be around more amazing people. If you're interested in that, I'm going to drop a, a, my cell phone number into the uh, chat box here. Write it down. Send me a text. Give me a call. Call me tomorrow. Do whatever you need to do. Track me down. Just Google me. You'll find me there. Clay Bernie, B-Y-R-N-E. Put that up right now. I'd love to talk to you. And even if you want some advice on like what to do with your phone, with your phone, with, with, uh, I would hit it with a golf ball. The, um, if what, like what to do with your database, then, um, then I'm, I'm happy to talk with you. If you're having a hard time like sorting them or figuring out who's what and how to approach them and stuff like that, I'd be, I'd be more than honored to help you out with that. I'm not in this for me. I'm in this to help you guys. When we get into a transaction together, you're going to remind me, hey, I was on one of your events. I'm mean, like, great. We can work this. We can work through this together. Right, because I know that you're more interested in yourself than just serving yourself. You want to serve other people at a higher level, and you're looking to make improvements in your life. And that's what the journey is all about, guys. You good? I gotta go to my son's basketball practice. It's cold outside. Anything else? When am I gonna come see? So guys, come in the office. Come see us. I mean, if you have any questions, just call me. I just put my number up there. All right. See y'all later. This reminds me of the career night we did like last month. Like none of, nobody wanted to leave. I didn't want to leave. It's so nice to be around people. Right? All right. Y'all are amazing. Thank you. You are amazing. Yeah. Thank you. See you guys. Thank you, Clay. Appreciate it, man. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you.